Frank Del Estrito, talking about movies. Frank, I just talked to Robert K. Elder, the best film you've never seen. Uh, what a great book. Okay, and what is the best film I've never seen? Well, 35 directors champion the forgotten or critically savaged movies they love. All right. So you've got uh, Phil Lord on the Beaver Trilogy. Uh, you've got Richard Kelly on Fearless. You got Jay Duplass on Joe versus a Volcano. Now Duplass um, was involved with Cyrus and Jeff, who lives at home, in the Puffy Chair. So he gets directors to talk about, you know, this was John Patrick Shamley's movie, uh, Joe versus a Volcano. Mm -hmm. Not one of my favorite flicks, but um, it's that director's one of his forgotten classics. So, what would Frank Delostrito's um, best film you've never seen be? Let's see. Uh, an overlooked horror movie from the 1930s, which I think is the best horror movie of the 1930s, is Island of Lost Souls. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I hang out with the horror movie crowd, so they've all seen it, but when I mention it to most people who aren't horror movie people, they don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he brought up A Man for All Seasons, and he didn't want the director to discuss it, and the director said no one over under 30 knows the film. And uh, the, the, uh, the editor of the book said, you know, I was like, noting that uh, he was right. Yeah, no, uh, see, well, I, I haven't seen Man from All Seasons. When did it come out? About 19, late 1960s, is that it? I would say. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen it since then. You, uh, now that you mention it, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I've seen it on one of the, the, movie, the cable movie channels. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Of, well, yeah, I mean, movies 40 year, years old, uh, Kids today haven't seen them, haven't seen a lot of them because they just haven't had the opportunity. They don't, well, they, they, a lot of these movies go in the vaults never come out. As I noted to Elder, um, I'm a cable buff, so when you don't see them on cable, they inadvertently become forgotten classics. Classics. There's a movie I liked very much. I, I've only seen it once in the movies, Silent Partner with Christopher Plummer and Elliot Gould, and I thought it was one of the best uh, thrillers I'd seen ever. And I don't know, I don't think one person in a thousand knows what I'm talking about when I bring it up. And that would have been around ninth, late 1970s, 1980, something like that. So, yeah, I, I guess you could, uh, if, you can, if you can get out of your group, tend to, see, tend to see the movies you've seen and try to appreciate what the general movie-going public has the opportunity to see and then what, the opportunity, what they haven't had the opportunity to see. I guess you could write a book like that. I know about Joe and the Volcano. I've never seen it. Uh, you, you, you know, you can watch it at home maybe, but it's, it's really, it's hit or miss. Well, I know it didn't get great reviews, but I, I, I've never seen it, so I can't comment on it. I found it interesting at the movies. I found it curious, uh, but like I told the author um, years later, I think, hmm, ridiculous. Yeah. But um, it's October, and I have in front of me Vampire Over London. You're a great man. I am. Reading a great book. <laughs> well, I'm not reading it. I'm just using it as a decor. Okay, very good. And, I, you know, I have to um, be up on my authors when they call in, and you're part of the furniture here. Okay. Uh, take that as a compliment. I, I will. I've seen your furniture. I'm quite impressed. Okay, so now what I'm going to uh, say is that Frank and I are going to start picking some movies after this week's movie, which tomorrow is Rock, Rocket XM, as I'm, am I correct? Rocket Ship XM. Rocket Ship XM. And then next week we've got Dementia 13. So we'll talk about Dementia 13 next week, and then you and I should pick a couple for Halloween. I'm going to invite Lugosi on. Okay. Uh, Lugosi, because they've been in touch with me, thanks to uh, you and I talking. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, I have a woman who did a book on the, the Witches of Salem. But I'm probably not going to have her on the live show. We're probably going to cut a studio show with her. Okay. So uh, we're going to do a lot of Halloween stuff, so you and I can put our thinking caps on and... We could pick the movies for, uh, tomorrow is the 4th, Janis Joplin's anniversary. She died 33 years ago uh, tomorrow. 1980. Uh, you, uh, a fellow Texan person. No, 1970, so that would be 43 years ago. Yeah, 43 years. I'm getting old. Yeah, I, thought, I thought 1980 sounded that recent, but yeah. 43 years ago, um, a fellow Texan, Janis Joplin, passed away. She was from Austin. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got Rocket Ship XM. 
So that would be the 4th. Then we got the 11th. So then we've got the uh, 18th and the 25th. So we've got two more moves to pick. Maybe Last Man on Earth. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, verify that. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in the public domain. I love that movie. Do you? Well, you're, you're one of the few that do, but it deserves... The trouble is, it, its weakest part is its first few minutes. If you get through that, it starts picking up fast. But uh, I know the first time I watched it, I said, uh, you know, I kind of lost interest. But then... Uh, Later on, I forced myself to watch the whole thing, and I was glad I did. I think it's terrifying. I think it is the best version of I Am Legend, Richard Matheson's book. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it better. than I don't like the uh, Will Smith version. Mm -hmm. Will Smith is the Vincent Price of the um, New Millennium. You know that. I didn't know that, and I'm not sure I agree. But <laughs> He's in more science fiction movies. My God, I just saw the one with his son, and then he did the uh, Independence Day and I, Robot. Will Smith does more science fiction than anyone. I guess there's box office. I did not see this, the movie with his son. I forget what it was called. How I, I forget the title. I liked it. The critics panned it. Yeah, I know the critics didn't like it. I've never spoken to anybody. I don't think it did much business because I've never spoken to anybody that's seen it. Uh, I think it'll, it'll make money eventually. It's one of those films that the foreign box office did a little better. So Will Smith might have commanded some you know, box office over there. Uh, who knows? It, it's an interesting movie. I thought some of the critics were unfair, but it, it could have been tighter. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it's, it had a lot along the lines of that Tom Cruise movie. So there's some parallels between that movie and the Tom Cruise movie. Uh, I you know that one. Bad, um, I don't remember the name of the Tom Cruise. Both of them. I mean, that, that's how um, disposable they were. <laughs> Big Bucks, disposable film. Okay, well... They're out to get the. They're not art. They're not trying for art. They're trying for box office. But I, I, I oh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't remember the names of those movies. Um, next question is: Did we review Rocket Ship XM before? Yeah, we've had it on before, and uh, it's a seminal movie in the sense it's made in nineteen. Two, two, two seminal movies come out in 1950. Rocket Ship XM is the first. Comes in June. And Destination Moon is the second, comes out in August, and it was kind of a race between them, and was even, there was almost legal action between the two, which is why in Rocket Ship XM, I'll, I'll give away a little bit of the plot, though yeah, this is only giving away the first few minutes, they're heading towards the moon, but they get diverted to Mars, and uh, something we know would be absurd in today's space program, <laughs> but uh, they, pull, they pulled it off then, but name a science fiction movie before 1950, and you're hard-pressed. I mean, you can come up with a couple when you think about it, but, but it really starts with 1915. It's really these two films, which both do pretty well at the box office. They're, they're both uh, modest budget. Rocket Ship XM is more modest than Destination Moon. And, uh, but they do, they do well enough at the box office, and then 1951, a year later, is a big explosion. Day of the Earth stood still. The Thing are big hits, and they really, really makes the science fiction genre take root. But it starts here. And again, it was made. It was made on the cheap. Uh, it's written, produced, and directed by Kurt Newman, a man who had been uh, in Hollywood most of his life. Though so you'd be hard pressed to name movies that he made. He made The Fly in 1958, which is another low-budget movie that really took off. And uh, he, this movie benefits from some of his mostly unknowns in this movie, but two of them, Lloyd Bridges. And Hugh O'Brien became big TV stars a, a, ten years later. And, I, again, that's probably something young viewers today say, Lloyd Bridges who? And say, well, he's Jeff Bridges' father. Oh, yeah, but, you know, Lloyd Bridges did a lot of work, and he was a, a big TV star. And Hugh O'Brien um, made a fortune playing uh, Wyatt Earp on television for five or six seasons in the late 1950s. And then after that, he worked when he felt like it because he had, he had made his money, and he... Uh, He's very selective at rules. So, uh, the, the, the bad news is you don't see him much after that, So, uh, especially in movies. The last movie of his I can recall is Twins with uh, Mark Schwarzenegger and, and Danny DeVito. He's, he plays, uh, he plays a, a, a sperm donor who is Schwarzenegger's father. When you get him on screen and get the camera angles just right, you can see a family resemblance. Hugh O'Brien? Hugh O'Brien. Well, I, I'm saying get them on screen. Do the, do the makeup and camera angles just right, and, and you can see a family resemblance. <laughs> no, but it was Hugh O'Brien from this movie. Yeah, Hugh O'Brien. That, that's amazing. Uh, no, no, I mean, you were, no in, in Twins, there's a scene with, uh, between Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Hugh O'Brien, 
and the way they, I give them credit, the way they filmed it, you would have thought they were father and son just by their profiles. Now, I'm, now I'm sure the makeup and the camera angle and the lighting did everything they could to accentuate that, but they pulled it off. But Lloyd was probably gone, so you couldn't get Bo Bridges and Lloyd Bridges together. I, I uh, well, Lloyd is gone. Uh, you, you, Brian's still with us. Lloyd uh, died in 1998. He, yeah, uh, before he, twins. I, in, I think he, uh, he appeared in two uh, Seinfeld episodes, and then he died right after. And there's actually a Seinfeld episode that is dedicated to him because he died right after he made he he worked with Seinfeld. Oh, that's and, uh, amazing like, stuff. Seinfeld. Excuse me. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, but the actor who, who is the scene stealer in this, uh, is the head of the expedition. His name is John Emery, and he has such a distinctive voice and such a distinctive profile that whenever he speaks, you, your eyes tend to look at him. And the role I'll always remember him in is he played the devil in an episode of Thriller called The, the, the Devil's Ticket. And he, he made a dynamite devil, and that was a role I wish he could have played more often. But he's the head of the expedition here, and uh, he's, he's, he's rather a, a dominant figure, but he had no, he had no choice. He's just a, he, that, that voice is a one in a million. You just go right to it. In fact, his profile and his voice was so distinctive, there was always a rumor that he was John Barrymore's illegitimate son. It seems that rumor has no, no foundation other than the fact that he had a voice like Barrymore and he had a profile like Barrymore. And Mia Farrow's oldest kid is now being linked to Frank Sinatra. Have you read that? I have not read that. Uh, so he's not Woody Allen's kid. He's Frank's kid. Can he sing? Uh, he, he's a good-looking guy, and uh, he does not look anything like Woody Allen. And on that note, we're off Adam. to uh, Dementia 13 next week. Okay, I'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Frank. Bye. Frank Delestrito, author of Vampire of London, Robert K. Elder, Author of, and this is a long one, The Best Films You've Never Seen, 35 Directors Champion, The Forgotten, and Critically Savage Movies They Love. It is Wincam. Thank you, Wincam. Views and opinions of mine, no one else's, uh, except for my guests. Have a great day, and we'll be back. Reeling is on next. Reeling, reeling, reeling in the years.